In this video, we're going to be covering how to build the header organism, which will be repeated throughout our application using the molecule navigation list and by using a smaller atom of logo. So in this video, we're going to be building the header organism, which is made up of a navigation molecule on the left hand side and a navigation molecule on the right hand side with a atom logo in the middle. And we'll also be implementing a mobile responsive layout for this header component, which will allow us to build a mobile navigation system, which works using React hooks. So before we get into all of that, let's first build our component files in our project. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the footer directory and rename all of the files and references to header references. So we've now got our header files available to us in our system. And we've got our header React component, which is a standard um, functional component, which is returning a styled header with nothing in it at the moment. And styled header is defined in our styles file. Now, all of these styles can be found in the GitHub repository, but these are just sort of some styles I came up with to meet the design requirements. You can also see I've included some media queries. So we have both a mobile and a desktop layout for our header component. We then have our knobs file, which is a copy of the menus we had coming in from the footer, but we're going to rework this in a moment. And then we have the stories file, which is bringing in the menus and adding it to our header. So I'm actually going to update the prop name to be navigation instead of menus or navigations, let's just call it navigation. And then we're going to update this, this to be navigation. So we'll have two menus in our header. And if we have a look at our design once again, so we have shop, about, FAQ, contact, and then insights, account, and then we have some icons. So we're going to actually have to rework our navigation component in a moment, but we'll start adding in these items now to our knobs JSON file. So we have shop. So I've added in the menu items. So we have shop about Celtic elements, FAQ contact, and then insights account, and then some user navigation um, icons. Now you may have noticed for each object in our items array, we now have a new key called icon, which is set to null for the majority of the items. But for the final two, we have the user icon and the bag icon, as that matches with our design that we have for our header. So as you can see, the icons at the end. Now, we can go ahead and import this to our header. So it's being passed in as a prop navigation. And in our header, we can now use this navigation to map over for our molecule. So we can go ahead and say navigation um, dot length is greater than zero and navigation dot map. And then for each navigation, we want to get the items. So we're going to destructure it immediately from our well, actually, let's just, let's just go and break it down a bit more. So for each navigation we find in our array, so that would be this object and this object, we are going to get access to items and title. So it would be a menu, and then we would return our navigation, and then items would be equal to menu for items, and then we can go ahead and finish that up. So now we have, if navigation has an array and the array is more than zero items, then we are going to return for each navigation we find, which is a menu, we're going to return the menu items into the navigation. We can also destructure this immediately into items. And then instead of returning menu items, we can just return items. And if we wanted to, we could return a title as well, but we're not using that at the moment. We could use that as a key though. So we could do title. And then because we're mapping over, 
we want to give each item a unique key so we can use title or we could do something a bit more fancy header menu title and now if we go ahead and run this uh, storybook we'll set up the prop types and default props in a moment but we just want to make sure that this is running correctly So we now have our header, which isn't displaying too great at the moment. As you can see, it's kind of just stacking on top of one another. But I think this is because we haven't added in the class names that I have in my style sheets. So we can go ahead and implement those now. So in my style sheet, I've actually got references to a class called header navigation, which is a wrapper we need to put around all of our navigation items so we can do that now by doing div class name header navigation and then bring this div at the bottom that should help a bit with the styling so now we have a flex wrapper which is pushing the items apart and next we will need to actually bring in our logo so i've only got access to a png um, of the logo which has a white background but we can go ahead and copy that file and bring it into our project. So storybook, assets, images, and then we'll just pop it in the directory there. And then in our React file, we can go ahead and import the new asset. So import logo from assets, images, logo.png and we can use the logo in our file by using image source and then set it to be the logo and we'll say celtic elements logo so now we have our logo showing and our atoms and they hide on mobile and tablet now one thing we want to do is implement a button which shows our navigation on mobile when we click on it so like a hamburger button um, so to do this we're actually going to make use of a react hook called use state so we'll import that and we'll have to implement some logic now so we're not immediately returning a html element we'll add in a return statement and open up our React component for some logic. And the use state hook is great because it allows us to tap into the benefits of React, which is managing state within an application or in a component. And in this case, we're going to create a Boolean value. So we're going to say is open and set open. And we're going to set a default value to false. So is open is the current value of the use state. So by Default would be false and set open will allow us to set the value of the state to either true or false. So now that we have that, we will want to create a button for our component, which will allow us to toggle the state. So we can do that by creating a button. So you could do this with the button we've created previously, which would be a great idea because now you're bringing in atomic structures to a larger organism. So we're going to go ahead and import our button. And with our button, we're going to create an onclick event and we're going to create toggle menu. And we'll just give it the text toggle menu. And then we're going to create the toggle menu function, which will take the event of the click and prevent the default action. And then we're going to set open to be the opposite of the current open value. So if it's set, if is open is currently set to false, it will set it to true when clicked and vice versa. If it's already true, then it'll turn it to false. So if we save this and head back over, we now have toggle menu and to visualize the change, I guess we could do, um, we could do some fancy stuff here. So we could say if is open, then the text will be hide menu. 
but if it's not, then it'll be show menu. So now when we click it, show hide, show hide, because the is open state Boolean is changing. Um, the styling isn't too great on this at the moment. I'm not sure why that is. I think it, if we have a look at the code, so we have button and then image at the end. So would we want the button to be last? Would that help? That does look better. Yeah. Okay. So we want to change the order of the components. So I will bring the button down to the bottom. And now when we bring it down to mobile, show menu, hide menu. Cool. That's looking good, but we're not actually changing the, um, the menu to be showing or not. So to do this, we're going to pass in the value of is open to our styled header, but we're going to change the class name. So, so far we've got the styled header, which is a header element, but we want to change the class name based on if it's open or not. So we can do class name is equal to is open. And if it is open, then we'll set it to header open. But if it's not open, we'll set it to header closed. So now when we toggle our menu comes down and hides when we're not showing it. So now that we've got the header working as we would kind of expect so far, we now can move on to implementing the icons to our navigation. So we're going to be revisiting our navigation molecule and implementing some new logic, which allows us to toggle between the different icons that we have available to us. Now we've kind of done something similar to this before with the button. So if we go into the button component, we can go ahead and copy this import statement and setting up of the icons and bring it into our navigation. So similar to how we worked the button component to include a icon prop, we're going to do the same with the navigation, um, but with the items. So within the items, we can now accept a icon, which is a string and it's not required. And we will destructure this in our navigation list. So previously we were just returning an anchor, but instead we're now going to be returning potentially a icon within our anchor. So we're going to use a ternary operator. So we're going to do icon. So if icon is set, then return a navigation icon and we're going to pass in icon of value icon and title of value title. Otherwise, if we don't have access to an icon, then just return the item.title and we can get rid of our old item.title bit. So this might return an error in our application because we haven't defined navigation icon. So similar to how we did in our button component, we can go ahead and copy this and set it up to be navigation icon. And it's going to be a navigation icon. Now, because we're returning a navigation list item, we will also want to return the title of the page that's being passed in. So if the icon is available, we have access to title. So we can go ahead and get title. This should be name. And if we have a title available, then we want to return a span with the class name hidden. So in my global style sheet, I've got a class name hidden, which will create an accessible text um, item for anybody with a screen reader, because an icon doesn't really describe what the page is completely. We'll want to have some form of text for screen readers. So we can go ahead and return title and then 
believe that should be it. Uh, the closing span. <laughs> cool. So now when we return to our application, refresh, icon is not defined. So this is because we're using name, icon, icons. Where am I using icon? Navigation icon is not defined. Okay. I am dot icon, I am dot title. Cool. So now we have our icon showing because we've passed in an icon attribute or prop. And if we inspected the navigation item, if I can get enough room, then you can see we have the text cart, but it's hidden unless you're on a screen reader. So now we have access to a more dynamic navigation molecule and we can now use a combination of icons and text within our navigation system.